Welcome to the Writing Center's Crash Course in Punctuation for Scholarly Writing. Crash Course videos are a great fit if you are new to or have not used scholarly writing or English grammar in some time. There are many punctuation rules in English, but in this video, we'll focus on the most commonly used types of punctuation in academic writing. Periods, commas, semicolons, colons, parentheses, and quotation marks. We'll give you quick tips and introduce you to the correct and incorrect way to use each punctuation mark but we won't be talking about them in depth. Remember, this is a crash course. Instead, get out a pen and paper. If you're not familiar with one of these punctuation marks, write it down so you can look it up later. At the end of the video, we'll show you where to find more information on our website. Let's get started. Periods are the most common type of punctuation, and they come at the end of a complete sentence. This example is correct because it is a complete sentence. It has a subject, verb, and a complete idea, and ends with a period. This example is incorrect because it is not a complete idea. It is only a phrase or group of words, and not a complete sentence. Commas in academic writing follow a few patterns, and we're going to focus on two common uses of commas. First, commas are commonly used to connect two complete ideas in one sentence with a coordinating conjunction word like and, but, or so. The first example is correct because it includes a comma before the word but, and the sentence includes two complete ideas. The second example is incorrect because it is missing the comma before the coordinating conjunction but. The second common way we use commas is to separate clauses and phrases from the rest of the sentence, usually extra information that is not essential to the basic meaning of the sentence. This example is correct because the extra information is surrounded by commas. This example is incorrect because the extra non-essential information is not surrounded by commas. Semicolons connect two complete sentences that have related ideas. This example is correct because the semicolon connects the two complete sentences. This example is incorrect because the second part after the semicolon is not a complete idea. Colons separate an idea from a complete sentence, like a list or a related idea. This example is correct because the information before the colon is a complete sentence and the information after the colon is a list. This example is incorrect because there's not a complete sentence prior to the colon. Parentheses set off non-essential information within a sentence. This is information that is not relevant to the meaning of the sentence, but might be helpful to the reader. Parentheses are also used in APA style for citations. This example is correct because the extra information is set off in parentheses. This example is incorrect because the non-essential information is only set apart by a comma. Quotation marks indicate information taken from another source. This example is correct because Samson's wording is in quotation marks, showing the reader that it is a direct quote. This example is incorrect because the quotation marks are missing, so the reader wouldn't know this wording is from Samson. Now that you've learned about punctuation for scholarly writing, it's important to look at more examples and find out more about any punctuation marks you aren't sure about. To do so, search our website to find the examples and detailed information we have about these punctuation marks. Use the search box at the top right corner, the quick answers box, or the main menus to find more information and begin learning. 